I don't know if you noticed, but this month has been very exciting for 3D artists. We already got the new Blender 4.2 update, with the new AV Next render engine, and many incredible add-ons, along with the release of the much-anticipated Liquid Gem, the new fluid simulation software from the folks at Junka FX. But what many may overlook is the Liquid Gem public release, I mean the announcement that was talked about within the live stream. And there was a section dedicated to the new Ambergen update, with some new features that could at the very least raise some eyebrows. So without further ado, let's jump right in and see what we've got. Before we get into the update of the 1.2 version, let's first have a quick recap of how it got here in the first place. So the software has been publicly available since 2020, and officially it was released in 2023. And Embergen stands as one of the most popular new software in the field to create real-time volumetric fluid simulations for games, VFX, and everything else in between which brought a new fresh air and what could be referred to as a revolution in the 3D industry, thanks to its real-time volumetric fluid simulation abilities, which makes you able to create things like smoke, fire, and even magic effects, and you can do that on the fly, which is really interesting. And you can do this without all those long baking hours, with a level of complexity and flexibility that can be found in offline tools. And it does all of this with a node-based system and within a non-destructive environment, meaning you can edit the simulations however you want and anytime you want. And the icing on the cake, the simulations can be easily exported on other DCC software or rendered in Embergen as a flipbook image sequence that can be used in engines such as Unreal Engine 5 or Unity. So during the live stream, Nick Sievert, the CEO and founder of Jenga FX, I think downplayed this release by stating that what they added to the version isn't a lot, but still pretty cool additions that are always welcomed. In other words, it's not a complete overhaul or anything of that caliber, but simply new additions that came to support what already is here. The biggest change on this update is that now it supports movable simulation domains, allowing you to keyframe the motion of the simulation volume or parent it to a mesh within a scene. But let me now try to rephrase that. A simulation domain, in a way, is a virtual space or the invisible box where the simulation is happening. Basically, the boundaries that define the area within a simulation is calculated and rendered inside that. Now, the new support of movable simulation domains makes it possible to add keyframes to the motion of the simulation domain, in addition to animating its movement within the 3D space. Or even better, you can parent it to a mesh inside the scene. For example, in the live stream, there was a walking golem with a fire animation being parented to his hand and moving along with it, which wasn't possible on the software before. The other main feature is the mouse movement recording. In 3D graphics, particles are created based on an emitter, which is the source or the origin point from which particles are created and emitted to simulate various effects. And if you start moving the emitter around, the particles will react and move along with it, depending also on the system you put in place and the iterations you want to go over. And what this update changes is that now it is possible to auto-key the mouse movements and you can keyframe them when you are moving the emitter, which could also create all sorts of cool animations with ease. Or if you want, you could test the particles and how they will react. The other updates in Ember Gen 1.2 consist mainly of workflow improvements and some bug fixes, such as a redesign for the Curve Editor widget, which makes it possible to right-click on any Curve Editor within the software and pop it out, as well as the ability to snap frames in the timeline. As I mentioned before, this update might not be as phenomenal as some might hope, and I can understand that but in my opinion, it still has some cool features worth checking out, like the movable simulation domains. But if you are seeking more, what also caught my interest or my attention in the live stream was a sneak peek at their goals for the 2.0 version, which would hopefully come at some point in the future, with things such as a full sparse solver and photorealistic smoke, as well as HDRI support, in addition to faster simulations and supporting many more voxels, which is really important, especially for VFX projects. And if you combine it with the GeoGen and LiquidGen software, I think this might be the start of a new exciting and really fresh ecosystem that can help you work and do your projects in 3D. 
And there you have it guys. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more news like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.